So I've been asked by a lot of people, can you install Luminar AI as a third party plugin for the Adobe software Photoshop and Lightroom? And if so, how do you do it? Well, stay with me guys, because that's what we're going to cover in this video. I don't know about you guys, but I like this blue color scheme. I felt like something different today. Let me know, what do you think? Anyway, let's talk plugins. Can you use Luminar AI as a plugin for Photoshop and Lightroom? Yes, you can. Is it easy to set it up? Yes, it is, and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. I've said it in the past, I've been using Photoshop for 25 years, and there are features within Photoshop that I'm just not gonna turn my back on. And that's the same for Lightroom as well. I've been using it right since it first came out, and I really enjoy its organizational tools, its cataloging, and its advanced ability to work with metadata as well. So from a professional point of view, Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop are still gonna really remain integral to my workflow. So where does Luminar fit into all this? Well, there's a lot that Luminar can do that I can also do within Photoshop. It just takes me a lot longer to achieve those same results. Leveraging from Luminar's AI to speed up things like enhancing portraits, uh, replacing skies, even things like the Orton effect, which aren't that difficult to do in Photoshop, but they still take a little bit of time to set up with different layers, and you can just do it with one slider in Luminar AI. So from a plugin point of view, it's I just really recommend it for Photoshop. I've spent so long inside of Photoshop over the years creating perfect masks for the sky so I can swap out skies uh, for architectural shots where the sky wasn't perfect but I was committed to doing that shoot on the day and sometimes with landscapes as well I love to get the sky just right and as it is but sometimes it needs a little help but if I can leverage Luminar's AI to do all of that heavy lifting for me and save me a bunch of time I am going to do that. So yes, absolutely, we can use Luminar AI as a plugin for Photoshop and for Lightroom. Let me show you how we set it up. So first things first, let's double click on Luminar AI and open that up. Now I'm finding that Luminar AI is loading just as quickly as any other program on my computer. I'm running all of my programs off a nice fast M.2 SSD drive. And if you guys are wanting a faster load time from Luminar, seriously recommend you look into one of those drives if you're not using one of those already. So now I've got Luminar AI open, what we can do is install it as a plugin for Photoshop and Lightroom. But first of all, let's hop over to Photoshop and just open up a picture here. So for me with my post-production, I really like to have an idea of where I want to take my photo edit before I even begin. But every now and again, I'm just a little bit lost for ideas. So this image here that I took as a long exposure, I think it was about 66 seconds that I had the camera open for to capture this. I like the shot, but I'm just not sure where to take it, to be honest. Um, and that's where I find Luminar is really helpful because it's so quick to apply templates and different looks to your image just with one click. It's really helpful to give you a little creative nudge and say, hey, how about you try this? Or what about this? So in terms of color balance, vibrancy, adding a particular mood to the shot or structure into the sky, I'm not quite sure what I want to do. And so it'd be great to come up to filter and open that within Luminar AI. So if we come to Skylum software, you'll see that currently I've just got Luminar 4, the previous version that's an option for me, no Luminar AI. So what are we gonna do? Let's hop back to Luminar AI, come up to the Luminar AI logo here, click that. From file within the menu here, we can come down and here you've got install plugins. Let's click that. You click install on Photoshop and Lightroom, whichever one you want or both, and it's coming up with a warning. Now I wanted to show you this. You need to run Luminar AI as an administrator to install Adobe Photoshop. The application will restart and the system may ask you for your administrator password to perform this action. Okay, cool. So it's now reloading Luminar AI and running it in an administrator role. So now when I come to Luminar AI logo here, come down is the file menu, come to install plugins, click that. Now I can just click install, install, click done. And now Luminar AI is available as a plugin for Photoshop and Lightroom. It really is as easy as that. So if I come to filter now and come down to Skylum software, you'll see oh, Luminar AI is not there. What's going on? Well, don't worry, it's fine. All we need to do is reboot Photoshop and it will be there. So let's close this down. And I'm gonna double click Photoshop from my other monitor, which you guys can't see, but I've just literally clicked on that. 
and Photoshop loads up in pretty much the same amount of time as Luminar. And now I'm going to click on this photo that I was showing you before. And now if I come to Filter and come to Skylum Software, we can see that Luminar AI is now available. You'll see all my other plugins I've got here as well. You can see that I quite enjoy a nice plugin for Photoshop. But here we're going to go to Luminar AI. But before I click this, what you want to do is actually copy the layer that you're working on. Or if you've got separate elements of layers, you want to merge them down into a single layer. So we're going to create a copy of our base layer that we're working on. And that way, when we re-import this with the Luminar edits, we don't lose our original. So we come up to Filter, come down to Skylum Software, and we click Luminar AI. Now Luminar AI is going to launch from within Photoshop. We can leverage the artificial intelligence inside of Luminar and all the tools there. And then we can bring that back into Photoshop and carry on our workflow. So while I love to dive into the edit section and create my own looks and templates, the really great thing for a photograph like this where I'm unsure where to take it, what creative direction I should go in, I'm able to use these templates just for, like I say, a little nudge, just a little creative nudge just to get me thinking, oh, maybe I'll take it in this direction or that direction. So straight away, Luminar's recognized that this is a landscape and it's given me easy landscapes, scenery and waterscapes to look at as options. So let's dive into the easy landscapes collection and just see what we've got. So if we use long exposure, we can see that the color is increasing. Uh, if we just click through these, I start to get a feel for what I'm liking the look of. And I quite like the look of forest stream. So if I look at my before and my after, if that was an edit I was wanting to do, I can literally just click apply and bring that straight back into Photoshop. If I want to use this as a starting point, but want to edit it further, I can do that too. For example, for a landscape, if I was wanting to come into the creative section and do say the autumn effect, which is available through this glow drop down here, the autumn effect in Photoshop, I can set it up via several layers and control it that way. But in Luminar AI, I can literally grab the slider and apply a little bit of that effect, which is a massive time saver. If I want to get a feel for the color toning I want to do, I can jump straight into choose a LUT. And as I roll over these, I can start to see what effect these different LUTs would have on this photo. So I can apply Long Beach and then just choose how much of that effect I want. And I don't really want too much, so let's just tickle that in at 21%. For landscapes, a big time saver could be using Sky AI just to quickly switch out your sky. But as I like the sky in this photo, I'm going to leave it exactly as it is. So let's apply this effect and hop over back to Photoshop. And now the photo begins exporting. And just as if we were exporting to create a new file, such as a JPEG or TIFF or whatever, Luminar AI has applied those filters and now it's brought it back into Photoshop. So it's not a new file. Those adjustments have been applied and that is a separate layer now within Photoshop. So I can turn that layer off and on. And now we've got something to work with here. And I could say I'm happy with that edit. All that layer could just be the starting point for me to say, I really like what it's done in terms of contrast in the sky and the bridge, but maybe not in terms of color toning. So I could change the blending mode and change it to luminosity. So we're just getting the contrast information rather than the color. And then if I wanted to, I could mask this effect exactly where I want it with a white brush change my opacity to 100% so I can do this quickly and paint over the jetty there. And then if we wanted a little bit more contrast in the sky from what we created in Luminar, we can paint that over as well. And now using that layer that we created with Luminar AI as a plugin, we've got a nice bit of contrast that we were able to paint in exactly where we want within Photoshop. And if you carry on doing some more edits within Photoshop and want to revisit Luminar AI, you can do that again. We could create a new layer to take into Luminar AI using the monster hotkey combination of Control, Shift, Alt and E. Wow, that is one big monster shortcut. Um, but now we've got a merged layer here and we could do the same again. Come to Filter, Skylum Software and take it back into Luminar AI and take it in another direction. Now I said that you can use Luminar AI as a plugin for Lightroom as well, and of course you can. So let's switch over to Lightroom now. And what you can do for a photo is do some initial edits within Lightroom. We could, I don't know, control the brightness of the sky if we wanted to. We could brighten up the center area. I'm just doing this really roughly so we can see some, some edits going on. And now if you thought that was an okay edit, 
which I don't, but let's say I do. Let's right click and we can go to edit in. And now along with all of my other plugins, we can see here Luminar AI. And we can click that and then we'll be met with this dialog box here, which is basically saying, do you want to edit a copy with those Lightroom adjustments? And we say, oh, yes, please. And what it's gonna do is open up Luminar AI again, and it's gonna generate a 16-bit TIFF file for us to work on in Luminar AI. And here we are inside of Luminar AI again, and we're free to use all of the tools, templates, and everything available to us. And as I'm sure you're aware, you are not limited to what it suggests for the photo. You can be a bit crazy and you could come into something completely different if you wanted to. We could jump into the essence section that's designed for portraiture if we wanted to, or the cinematic section. So I can apply a filmic teal orange or this Shanghai look here, which is a kind of interesting brooding kind of look to this image. So if we look at our before and after, before and after, or how about we try cyberpunk? Okay, that's brightened things up, but I think we're a little bit blown out in the highlights. So what if we just brought down the effect, just filtered that in slightly? We could jump in and correct these highlights, bring those back. But for the sake of the speed of the video, let's click apply and I'll show you how that's reloaded into Lightroom. Now, while Luminar AI has been sped up considerably over Luminar 4, the exporting part of it is still slightly slower than I would hope for, but there you go. It's not really a big deal when you think how quickly you can apply those edits. And if we look here, we can see that we have now got a .tiff file. So that is a brand new file that's been created for us that has those Luminar AI edits baked into it. Hopefully from this guys, you can see that it's really easy and straightforward to set up Luminar AI as a plugin for Photoshop and Lightroom. Being able to integrate Luminar AI into my workflow as a professional has been a real game changer because it really has saved me a lot of time. And as you saw in this example, it's quite good. If you're a little bit stuck for a creative direction, you're like, oh, I know this photo needs a little something something, but I'm not sure what then Luminar AI's templates can be a good starting point just to give you that creative nudge that you might need. I'm sure you haven't avoided all the hype, but if for some reason Luminar AI is new to you or you don't have a copy yet and you want to get hold of it, think this looks like it might be a good option for you, then please use the link below. I've got a discount code for you, which is at Sky10. That's going to save you guys some money at the checkout. And I also get a small commission, which as I often mention in my videos, just helps me keep creating free content for you guys. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. I hope it's been of help. If it has been helpful, just write helpful in the comments. That mean the world to me. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. And I'll see you in the next video.